So this trip is going to take us to the Israel Valley. It's going to take us to the month of June because this is harvest month. And this would also be in the time when the Midianites again and again would enter into the country. Let the local farmers work hard and then when they finished the harvest we will come and take away everything that they have. So in the beginning of Judges 6 we can read and the hands of the Midianites prevailed against Israel. So it was whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up, also the Amalekites and the people of the East would come up against them. And they would come up with their livestock and their tents, and there would be numbers as the locust. And they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And we can read, and Gideon dressed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And this place where I'm sitting, this is actually a small wine press. You had huge wine presses, communal ones, where you could separate the wine from one person to another, one farmer to another. But then there would be small ones with a pressing floor over here and then the juice would fall down over here and be in this lower place and we have a small family biblical wine press over here. So from here it's easy to see the wine press, my bag, the Bible is where you would step on the wine and you can see the lower hole where the wine where the grape juice would go down over here. And when Gideon is in the wine press this is his first meeting his first encounter with the Lord and the Lord says to him and you should save Israel from the hands of the Midianites have I not sent you and in the end of chapter 6 we can read and all the Midianites and Amalekites and the people of the East gathered together and they crossed over and encamped in the valley of Israel but the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet and he sends messages. It's time to go to war. Now, in Hebrew, it's written, and the spirit of the Lord lavsha et kidon. Lavsha is to dress, to cover up, to cover. The spirit of the Lord is not just on him, it is covering him from all sides and all corners. And the spirit is upon him and he's sending the messengers. And I think he's uh, tactics is very simple. I'm going to call on the tribe of Sebulun, that is in the northwest. I'm going to call on the tribe of Asher, that is in the north, and the tribe, my tribe, the tribe of Menashe, who is in the valley from the south. And we are going to squeeze the Midianite from two sides, and we are going to win the war. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. He's ready to go to war, and then suddenly he hesitates. And says, hey, God, give me one more sign. I'm going to put a fleece of wool over here. Can you put dew in it and not on the stones? And then, hey, do it the opposite way. Why is he hesitating? Did something happen that we don't know about? Why suddenly is Gideon stopping from his war? Or maybe there was a battle that we don't know about. Let's jump in the Bible and let's jump to chapter 8. Now chapter 8 is after that Gideon has thrown out the Midianites, entered into the camp. The Midianites have crossed over the Jordan River. They are fleeing and Gideon is in the pursuit of them. And when he captures two of their princesses, he said, I'm reading to you Judges 8, 18, and he said to Sebach and Salmona, what kind of men were there whom you killed at Tavor, at Tabor? So they answered, as you are. So were they. Each one resembled the son of a king. And he said to them, they were my brothers, the sons of my mother. And as the Lord lives, if you let them live, I would not kill you. And he, and he kills these two people. Now, were there, was there a war? Was there a battle in the valley next to Mount Tabor? Did the people of Israel lose that battle? Did Gideon lose his brothers at that battle? A battle we don't know about? 
So of course Gideon is a little bit afraid. Of course Gideon hesitates. And he says to God, can you please show me one more sign? Put dew on the fleece, a wall, but not on the stone. God, can you do it also the opposite way? And only when he's convinced that the Lord is with him, is he ready to go to battle for the second time. And this time, he's going to start the battle by choosing the people at the spring of Harod. So Gideon, you have to forgive me. I will be one of the 10,000, but I've been biking for 15 miles. I won't be one of the 300 that only grab water with his hand and lap it as a dog. So I am on the Moray Hill, the mountain behind me on the other side of the valley. That is the mountain of Gilboa. And then you can see beautiful the Israel Valley. And on the slopes of the Moray Hill, to the north of them, where I'm standing, was the camp of the Midianites. Gideon comes over here and he can hear how two men are talking. And one is telling the other one about the dream that he had. And he says, I saw a loaf of barley bread tumble into the camp of the Midianites. It came to a tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned. And the tent collapsed. And I think the symbol over here is very simple. The loaf of bread symbolized the farmer, the people of Israel, the tribe of Menashe, they were farmers down here in the valley. The Midianites were a nomadic tribe or nomadic people moving around with their camels and with their tent. The bread makes the tent tumble down or fall down. The farmers are going to make the nomadic people, the Midianites, to fall down. Now when Gideon Here's this dream, he goes back, gathers his 300 men, and he brings them over here. Now is the time to attack the Midianites. And he says this beautiful sentence, Mi meni tiru vikentasu. Look at me and do likewise. And I think this is one of my favorite sentences from the Bible, because I think as a person, as a parent, as a teacher, as a rabbi, as a pastor, right? Look at me and do likewise. And you know what? When you go to become an officer in the Israeli army, at the outgoing parade on the wall is a big sign and the four words in Hebrew, six words in English, look at me and do likewise. And I think it's so beautiful, not just the message, but if you think about it, here you have a message being said by an Israelite person more than 3,000 years ago. And this is still the motto of the Israeli soldiers, the Israeli commanders, 3,000 years later, back today. Have a good day, and I'm looking forward to the time when you and me will travel the country again together with the Bible. Bye.